And joining me now live from Venezuela's capital, Caracas, is Lucas Kerner, political analyst and editor of VenezuelaAnalysis.com. Lucas, good to see you. Thanks for joining me. How are things on the ground there? Well, things continue with, mo with largely normal as they have been over the past 11 days since uh, Juan Guaido swore himself in. On Saturday, you did have two dueling marches. Important to note that yeah, there was significant turnout in, in both. Uh, I would say that there was less turnout in Juan Guaido's march than there was on the 23rd, which did see a very significant, like, 600,000 participation in Caracas, while Maduro did manage to rally more supporters um, in Caracas, in the west of Caracas, in uh, on on Saturday. So definitely, there there seems to be the the one by though did not make any new announcements on Saturday. The, so there seems to be a, a concern of what what is the next step for for this his this interim self declared interim president as he has called on the military numerous times to oust the government, yet 11 days later, he still is not president. He's still not sitting in Miraflores Palace. And yet we have, as we just, Donald Trump is now threatening military intervention in order to, to, to make that a reality, perhaps. Well, let's talk about that because, as you mentioned in an interview earlier today, President Trump said uh, he refused to meet with Venezuelan President Maduro and hasn't ruled out military intervention. Has there been any reaction from Maduro and how are Trump's comments likely to be received by him and the Venezuelan public? The Venezuelan government has yet to issue an official response to Trump, though it's important to note that Trump has made this threat previously, and the, the Venezuelan government has, you know, repeatedly uh, urged the United States not to make the what it calls the mistake of attempting a catastrophic U.S. intervention in the in in the country, which you know, definitely would be a Posed by a large section of the population. It, it's important to note that the opposition governor of Tasha State on the border with Colombia said on Saturday, Lady Gomez, that she opposes all foreign interventionism, quote unquote, in the country in an explicit reference to uh, Trump and uh, Guaido and the, these, these threats coming in. And you know, she also has declined to recognize Guaido. So there definitely appears to be fissures within the opposition between a more moderate ring that wants a negotiated settlement along the lines of what Mexico and Uruguay and the European Union are proposing for uh, February 7th. And then there's more hardline opposition that is grouped around Guaido that wants to oust Maduro as soon as possible with, uh, with uh, crushing economic sanctions and even perhaps foreign military intervention if necessary. And President Maduro recently suggested moving elections forward. Do you think this is likely to uh, placate the U.S.? Well, Maduro is proposing National Assembly elections. Uh, effectively, the National Assembly has been in contempt of court since 2016. It's a long story, but part of it has to do with three deputies, three legislators who were under investigation for voter fraud that the National Assembly threw, uh, swore in and in violation. But you know, the issue is that there's a real confrontation between, as I mentioned, this hardline opposition that lar largely controls the National Assembly that from the very beginning, when it won that election in 2015, sought to use it as a platform to oust the government within six months, as it claimed, and then the government, which, of course, wants to maintain itself in power and uh, avert this kind of these attempts to overthrow it. So it remains to be seen what's going to happen with the United States clearly is not open to any kind of dialogue or negotiation and wants to oust the Maduro government through force. The Mexico and Uruguay and the European Union seem more open to dialogue, but it remains to be seen what this proposal for elections will actually mean in practice. Lucas, what do we know about Juan Guaido, the man who declared himself president? Is he, I guess, the, the so-called white knight that could fix Venezuela? See, you have to understand that Juan Guaido, before January 5th, was virtually unknown in Venezuela. He was a backbench legislator for the, the very uh, hard right uh, popular will party. He was a student leader at the Catholic University, and then he did post-grad work at uh, George Washington University under the uh, uh, tutelage of the former IMF director, Luis Enrique Perez Betia, who was a hardline proponent of free market reforms in the country. And he himself uh, ha is also a well, his mentor is Leopoldo Lopez, who is the leader of that party, who was a key participant in the 2002 failed coup d'etat that was supported by the United States that temporarily ousted Hugo Chavez, democratically elected President Hugo Chavez, for 47 hours. And in that, in that time, Lopez had participated in a kidnapping of the, the interior minister. So definitely there's a, there's a checkered path to this 
this more radical section of the opposition that Juan Guaido comes out of. And it's unclear whether he's going to be able to cement his leadership over the whole movement, as you're seeing this fracture with the, the, uh, action, the Democratic action leader, Lady Gomez, opting for a more negotiated solution and opposing foreign intervention. Australia is arguably tactically supporting the overthrow, uh, overthrow of the democratically elected Venezuelan president by recognising Juan Guaido as interim president. How do most Venezuelans feel about this foreign intervention? I think you have to understand that Venezuela is an extremely divided country. That because Maduro, though uh, the government has high unpopularity rate due to the, its, its management of the economic crisis, it does retain a significant support base of at least you know, 31 percent of the, the voting eligible population that voted for him in May. That's over six million voters. While the, you know, there's the opposition you know, itself ha is very unpopular, with polls showing the National Assembly of, of having disapproval rating of upwards of 70 percent. The majority of Venezuelans are uh, at least almost 50 percent are independent, or neither support the government and nor do they support the opposition and are not in favor of you know, solutions that are or uh, Solutions that don't involve resolving their their everyday necessities, such as resolving the economic crisis and you know addressing issues like crime, um, access to medicine, etc. So they're really, the, the, I think it's uncertain at this point whether the major, the majority of the population is really going to support uh, uh, this attempt to oust the government with, at you know with the backing of perhaps uh, U.S. tanks or U.S. airplanes, which you know certainly would not. Uh, improve the humanitarian situation in Venezuela. Sounds like a very complex situation. Lucas Kerner, political analyst and editor of VenezuelaAnalysis.com, thank you so much for your time. Thanks coming for up, me. Coming up after the break, sport with Heather Miller, who has...